Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to be walking through activity 6-6 -6, titled Creating a Failover Cluster. This is from the MCSE slash MCSA guide to configuring advanced Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2 services in preparation of exam 70-412. In my edition of the book, this activity begins towards the bottom of page 247. Um, so, a quick overview. Um, we want to set up failover cluster, a failover cluster between server 2 here and server 3 here. So server 3 is going to be my second node. Um, in order to do that on both of these servers we need to have installed the failover cluster feature. And then once we've done that we can actually begin to configure um, the cluster itself. Um, one thing you want to do before you try to create a cluster is to validate the configuration. Um, just to make sure that it can build the cluster correctly and that your cluster will work properly in case one node goes down the other one can pick up services. Um, so that's what we're going to do now is we're actually going to go ahead and create the failover cluster. Um, one other thing that's worth noting is I do have a domain controller running. Um, both of my nodes are joined to the domain as member servers but not domain controllers. <coughs> All right, so we're going to begin here, um, assuming you have already completed uh, the validation step and that everything checked out well. We're going to go ahead and create the cluster. So you can read through this really quickly. Um, it kind of explains the purpose of a cluster and how um, the roles work if one node goes down or one server goes down. Um, the way the cluster will pick up the services so that you have that failover that you need. Alright, in our select servers, I'm going to be using the server name. For my two nodes. One thing I noticed when I was going through my validation, I had a hard time initially getting my secondary node um, listed here. It kept throwing me a few errors like it couldn't be contacted or whatever. Um, if you do see those, open up a command prompt, and I would do this on all three of your servers. Um, so the first thing you want to do is make sure that your IPv4 settings, your DNS is pointing back to your DNS server, which should be your domain controller in this case. So mine is 1.2 um, on the 1012.1.0 slash 24 network. Um, 1.2 is my domain controller here. Um, and we see that he has the DNS service running. So I want to make sure that that server is my primary DNS server. I went ahead and threw one of Google's DNS servers as my secondary. So you want to verify that configuration on all three of your machines, um, especially the two nodes on the domain controller, the DNS server. Accomplish pretty much the same goal. Um, going out to the secondary. Um, so once you verify we want to come back to our command prompt and we want to flush the DNS cache so we give the command IP config. And, and it's completed. Between the two, in between the two. Um, it may be a network setting where their IP addresses are conflicting or on different networks. Alright, so once we have both of our servers listed here, we'll hit next.
and then we'll want to go ahead and give it a cluster name. Like so. And I can see that it is um, catching my network correctly. Um, so we want to go ahead and give it an address here. I'm going to go ahead and give it 150. Um, when we do this, it should, because both of these are member servers on my domain, it should automatically create the DNS entry um, for this cluster address. So we'll, we, we will go ahead and verify that once we're done. Um, it should also create an Active Directory computer object. Alright, so we'll go ahead and hit next. We will let it process. each individual step that it's running through. So right now it's actually creating the, the failover cluster. Once it finishes, we will quickly in that summary, if there are any errors or warnings, you might want to hit the view report option just so you can get more details about whatever the error or warning is. So I'm not seeing any specific errors or anything here. Um, so there's that view report button if you have any errors or warnings. I'm going to go ahead and hit finish. Um, one thing before I do that, um, if it is successful, um, the quorum here, by default, is node and disk majority. So that's automatic there. We're going to go ahead and hit finish. Next thing we want to do is to go ahead and verify and review the cluster configuration. So once it comes online here, down here. There we go. So there's my cluster using that IP address and using this storage. Um, so one advantage to using a cluster, um, if you have anything hosted, like for example a web server, um, if you have any web pages that are hosted, having that service on a cluster allows you to roll updates through the servers without ever taking your website offline. Um, if you're using a single server, anytime you have to do updates, that server has to come offline um, because a lot of the updates will require a system reboot. Using the, the CAU, the Cluster Aware Updating, um, it will automatically update the first server or the first node in the cluster and then it'll reboot it bring it back up online and once the services are restored it'll move to the next node and then it'll update it and reboot it and so on and so forth that way your services are always available so let's go ahead and come back over to my domain controller I'm going to go ahead and get DNS running and we see that it did create that DNS entry for us automatically if we look in Active Directory Users and Computers, we should also have a computer object. While that's coming up, we can go ahead and hit this drop down on the Cluster Manager. Um, we can look at the individual nodes. And so in this case, I only have two nodes. You may end up doing this with more servers. Um, the limit is 32 currently, I believe. Um, 32 servers per cluster 
which is pretty significant. Um, so you can review your storage, networks, events, and roles, depending on what exactly you want to have this failover protecting, um, as far as keeping it serviced. Um, if we look here in computers, there's my computer object for that cluster. Alright, so let's come take a quick look at our disks. And so we have two. We have our witness disk, and then the actual storage that's available. We can go ahead and review the networks really quickly. So again, it's currently just the single network, the 10.12.1.0 slash 24, which is the only network that I currently have set up for this. Um, and if we, part of this is also that I only have one network interface. I don't have any other interfaces. If I did, I would have one for um, client access, and then I'd have one that's a local network. And so, on And um, and I hope to see you in my next video.